Hi, my name is Jamie Brougham, and today I want to talk to you about democratic reform. And I'm going to start my talk in Hong Kong. A couple of years ago in Hong Kong, a lot of people came to the streets and made a big fuss about the fact that the Chinese government was going to pick the candidates that they could vote for. And they didn't like that because whether it was Tweedledum or Tweedledee, the point was is that they were both working for the Chinese government. And the people stood up and protested saying that that's not democracy and that's not fair. And the situation rolling it over to North America is just like that in Canada to some degree, but certainly to a huge degree in the States. The only difference is, is that the people qualifying the candidates are the rich. They, the candidates have to go to people with money to get that money in order to run. If they don't get the money to run, then they can't be qualified because they won't communicate with the constituency and nobody's going to vote for them. They'll look powerless. So we have what happened in China with the government picking the candidates to what happens in the United States where the wealthy pick the candidates. So that's a problem in Canada, although we are dealing with it and it's uh, to a lesser degree. And it's here in Canada where we can take the next step, the, the most advanced step in democratic reform. And what that is, is actually giving we the people a say. We can start to do things that lets us deal with the issues that concern us. Now, democratic reform is not more important than global warming. Democratic reform is not more important than affordable housing. It's not more important than tons of issues that face us every day. But it is the first issue if you want to do anything about those issues. Because alone, we are individual souls that can't do anything. But together, collectively, in a democracy, we are it. We have the power to establish government policy. We have the power as consumers to control corporate behavior, as shareholders, as constituents, as shareholders, as members of organizations. We can make a difference. We just need the tools and the ability to come together as a collective group and start expressing what we think is important. And those arguments that drive me nuts about, oh, we can't give the power to the people because they're uninformed and they don't care. Well, not in my neighborhood, not me, not you. People who are engaged are typically well-educated, they're informed, and let's start with them. Let's start with people who are engaged and educated and start giving us a say. But what we need for that, and this is where how we are going to reform our democracy, is in wards, in cities, we are going to put government offices where all three levels of government are, federal, provincial, municipal, even school board trustees, are going to be found in communities where they have a face, where young people, old people, anybody can find government. And if we have an issue, we're going to go to those offices and we're going to be able to say, I have an issue. And they're not going to go, oh, I'm sorry, you've got to go to this office because that's federal. Or i got to go to this office because it's municipal. No. Everything's there. It's their job to work out how to service us. Simple request. Great way to reform our democracy because already you have government being responses, responsive to the people. So we're going to do that in places like community centers where people come anyways not obscure three-story buildings in downtown or places that are hard to find, places with public parking, places where people might come together anyways. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put forms, meeting rooms. Like how about a gymnasium that can be used as a gym, but it can also be used as a place where people come together and meet. That's exciting. It's, it's, it's exciting. We could make it an amphitheater. I love the idea of putting an amphitheater in my community where I can go to watch films on a Saturday night or I can watch plays, or we can have public discussions. What an opportunity. And we need these in every community because we need places where the people can come together. And just as importantly as these meeting rooms, big ones, small ones, in community centers, we need electronic forms, of course, because not everybody can make it down to a meeting room or a place where we have to meet in person, person and there's no need for that anymore. We can do things online. We can have discussions. We can have conversations, we can um, come together, express our values and beliefs, our ideas, our opinions, and negotiate, compromise, and find a common direction forward so that we can give 
our elected officials the direction that comes from the people. And you know, in our communities, when I think of my community, there are doctors and lawyers and business people and government people and all sorts of great resources that are untapped. We don't need a body of sober second thought, although the Senate's great, but having the resources in our community giving us direction is even better because this is a democracy after all. And just as important as these forms are and us coming together is education. We need to start educating in schools, educating young people about how to come together, negotiate compromise and, and dream about tomorrow, have visions about how to make the world a better place and giving them the tools that they need so that they can come together and discuss these things online. But we need to teach people how to communicate, how to do it, common language. There's a lot of basics that we never go over. We need to teach people how to do these things. And then finally, when it comes to education, we got to talk about the issues. We got to talk about the things that are changing our world. So the issues, right now we were relying on uh, media and the media to tell us what's going on in the world. And it's becoming smaller. There are less resources going into it. We get our information from the internet and that's not always true as we've come to learn. Fake news, right? We need to make sure that the news that we get is true and that we're being informed in a way that allows us to make decisions about the direction that we're going to take. When we put all that together, then lo and behold, it won't be anybody setting the tone. It won't be businesses with a bigger voice than us. And, you know, businesses have a right to speak. And I, I'm a business person myself. I want to support our businesses, right? Businesses are important. That's where innovation comes from. Um, special interest groups. Special interest groups make a lot of great points too. But government is accountable to us, to me, to my neighbor, to us in our local community. So by, by not having our voice united, the only people that government is really accountable to are the only ones that don't have a united voice. This has to change. It's a simple concept. A little bit of education, a little bit of resources, and we can change our democracy and we can still have a first past the post system. Doesn't matter because our elected officials will be accountable to the people. The people will have a united voice. They'll be educated. They'll know how to do this democracy stuff. And we're going to be a lot better off. Democratic reform is not more important than the issues like global warming and, and affordable housing and education funding and health care funding. Like, None of these are less important than democratic reform. But if we don't reform our democracy and give ourselves a voice, then we're not going to have the opportunity to do anything about these things. Give yourself the chance, get involved, and care. Thanks for listening.